Folks, whether you love them or loathe them, millions of people are going to buy them and want to know how to use them. And while there aren't as many hidden features as your average Android device, Apple's smartphone still packs a few hidden surprises. I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching C4E Tech, and this is 20 Cool Life... Uh, well, just read the sign. <laughs> A raise to wake feature has now been introduced to the iPhone whereby if you pick up a device, look at it, that will show the lock screen. But you can turn it off if you want to by going to settings, scrolling down to display and brightness and toggling on or off raise to wake. You can clear all your notifications at once now by force touching the X in the top right hand corner. When you force touch some applications, it will show you a widget. And you can add this widget to your today screen by tapping on the add widget option in the top right. So now if I scroll down for my notifications and then scroll right, the weather widget has now been added to my today screen. The revamp control center now includes force touch options for each of the actions at the bottom of the screen. For example, if I force touch the torch, I can change the intensity of the light. For the timer, I can set different preset times. For the calculator, it will show you the last copied result. And for the camera, you can do different things like selfies, slow-mo, or taking a photo. When you're in an application, if you force touch the very left side of the screen, you'll get multitasking. If you go halfway, that will open up multitasking as normal. However, if you force touch and then swipe all the way to the right, that will go to the previous application. If an application is misbehaving and you just need to shut it down, you can do a force close by holding onto the power button until the option to turn off the device comes up, then hold the power button again, and that will simply throw you off the application, and then when you go back into it, it should start again from scratch. Just like that. If you want to have a cleaner look on your folders, you can actually remove the name of them by putting in a character that the iPhone will not recognize. I'm going to leave the character in the video description so that you can simply paste it into the folder. It looks like a question mark now, but once I remove the editing options, there's nothing there. Now, while the iPhone 7 has lost the headphone jack, it has gained stereo speakers and you can adjust them by going to settings, scrolling down to general, then accessibility and towards the bottom of the screen we have two options whether to turn on mono audio and you can adjust the left and right balance of the speakers. Apple has finally allowed us to delete most of the stock applications, for example stocks, which is bloody lovely since nobody actually uses it. The one weird thing is that it doesn't actually delete the application off the iPhone. It just removes it from your home screen because if you try and reinstall it, even though you're not connected to the internet, it will put it straight back there. And of course, you can't delete absolutely every application such as the App Store and Safari. The native Apple Maps application now includes a brief weather report on a city as you swipe into it and it'll be placed in the bottom right hand corner just there. The keyboard acts as a trackpad if you long press on it and you can scroll around your text to easily edit what you want to and also if you force touch the delete button depending on the amount of pressure you put on it you can delete quicker or slower like this. When you're in messages, you can swipe to the left and hold to show the exact time index of when a message was received. And if you long press on a message, you can either react to it or delete it if you need to. If you'd rather hide the content of notifications on the lock screen, such as iMessages, you can do this by going to settings, then scrolling down to notifications, choose the application where you want to hide the content. And at the bottom, there should be an option called show previews. If you toggle that off, then go back to your lock screen, it should just tell you where the notification has come from rather than any content. You can use the camera as a magnifier if you want to, but you need to set it up. To do this, go to settings, then general, accessibility, and then magnifier and make sure that's turned on. And now whenever you triple click the home button, that will automatically turn on the magnifier. Ugh. Anyway. You can turn this off if you want to by going to settings and then magnifier. And if you just check back one screen on accessibility, scroll down to the bottom and then accessibility shortcut, you can give yourself a different option such as turning on assistive touch. And now when you triple tap the home button, 
you'll get the assistive touch option. Now you can take this triple home button click a little further by adding a dim function to your smartphone. And this is how you do it. Scroll to zoom option, toggle it on, and then triple tap with three fingers. Make sure that the magnification is all the way out. Now scroll down to zoom filter and make sure it's set to low light. Now go back to accessibility, scroll down to the bottom, accessibility shortcut, turn on zoom. And what that should do now is when you triple click on the home button, it will either turn on the dim setting or off like this. You can now do contextual lookup on words, which kind of acts like Google Now. So if you double tap on a word, then go to the lookup option, this will do an automatic search on the internet. And hey presto, we've got some C4E tech videos. You can also use Force Touch to manage downloads as they're occurring. Say for example, you download a game which is 1.3 gig, and that's Elle's Broken Kingdom, you can Force Touch it, get a few options, and one of them is to cancel the download. Get off my phone! Now of course, this is only a brief sampling of some of the cool, lesser known things your iPhone 7 and iOS 10 can do. And if you have any cool tips, let us know in the comments below. And if you want more, check out this mammoth 100 plus tips guide from the link in the top right of your screen right now. Otherwise, it's all the usual C4 E-Tech goodness. Like the video if you enjoyed it, post a comment if you have something to say, and subscribe to the channel because this light box is too small. Yeah, real professional. Sorry about that. As way of an apology, here's a bonus tip. Although Apple doesn't officially support direct screen recording of your device, there is a way to do it. And you want to point your browser to savagepool.com and tap on the link that says Get Air Show. That will install the application onto your device, but if you try and run it, it won't work because it needs a trusted certificate because it's not an official app from the App Store. So if I tap on it, it will simply say it's an untrusted enterprise developer. But you can fix this by going to Settings, then General, and scrolling down to a new options, which is Profile and Device Management. Now, whatever the enterprise app is called, you don't need to worry. It's just the developer needs to change the certificate whenever it gets revoked. Tap on the certificate, then the blue words and then the red trust button. And that should get you into the Airshow application like that. Now, in order to do a very simple screen recording, tap on record, then set your orientation, in this case, portrait, resolution, whatever you want it to be. And I recommend keeping smooth seeking on because it just gives you better performance. Then tap on next step. Then scroll up from the bottom of the screen to get your notification uh, control center. Airplay mirroring. And then you should see your own device's name. Tap there. That will send the bar at the top blue, which means that you are now recording a screen. So if I do a very quick demonstration of a couple of swipes, then go back to the recording application, tap stop, go to my videos in the top right hand corner and press play. The bar at the top blue, which means that you are now recording a screen. So if I do a very quick demonstration. And that's how you screen record your device. And just a word of warning, you do this at your own risk.